hello guys welcome to solving solutions on our channel where i get solutions to all your solving problems it's nice having you in class again today how have you been on today's tutorial we are going to look at um, ndwi right good what does it mean the normalized difference water index now it is a remote sensing techniques that measures the moisture content of vegetation from space right good now there's quite a note here it's a spectral index commonly used in remote sensing to highlight water bodies in satellite imagery, right? So in GIS, we can extract water bodies from satellite images using different methods. Thresholding, image classification, edge detection, indices, and machine learning. However, our interest today because of this um, NDWI is what the indices method, right? So these are some um, softwares we can use, um, GIS softwares we can use for the extraction. Now, if we are using indices, particularly the NDWI, which is a common um, techniques used in GIS for extracting water bodies. So it calculates the difference between the near-infrared band and the green or short-term wavelength, right? Good. So now for the water body extraction, using NDWI. The common bands used are the near infrared and then the short infrared, right? Good. So as it has been stated here. So there's a formula which is actually very important. So the formula for the NDWI is what? And then if we are using a Landsat 8 imagery, right? It's actually very important. It's band 3 minus band 5 divided by band 3 plus band 5, right? Good. So that is the formula for the extraction. And again, we also have the extraction processes. Now, once the water body have been highlighted, that is, um, I've used this formula to highlight the water bodies or using any other similar method. We can extract those water bodies, which we are going to see very soon using different methods like thresholding, connected component, filtering, vectorization, and validation, right? Good. Now, we are going to use the thresholding method on today's tutorial. So it involves setting a threshold value on the NDWI raster layer to classify pixels as either water or non-water based on their NDWI values, right? Good. So Avon highlighted the water body. We are now going to threshold them so that we can easily extract right we can easily extract the water bodies from the um, satellite imagery which now contains um, two values which is zero and one right good so you're going to see them very soon now um, the step essentially separates the water bodies from the rest of the landscape now we are using QGIS so we can either use the raster calculator or the reclassify tool and then we are going to use the, the raster calculator right good so we are going to create what a threshold and then assign the value one to it so that um, when we now query when we now query because we are going to convert our raster to vector so when we now query we can easily extract what those um, values that are just one right good so that is what this using the raster calculator to perform the thresholding you can now use a conditional statement to assign a value of one to pixels with ndwi values above the threshold right good so that's what it means so this is an example now to extract the water bodies automatically which is the final step we have to convert that raster to polygon still using um raster to vector conversion and then select the water body polygons right so this is an overview of what we are going to do on today's tutorial so now let's go back to qgis we have our satellite imagery here loaded so for the raster calculator we select raster there and then we open what the raster calculator now from the description we have read the bands to use for the calculation are what let's still scroll up okay we have band 3 minus band 5 and then band 3 plus band 5 right good so let's come back so band 3 which is this minus band 5 which is this right then we close that bracket divided by we open another bracket again band 3 plus band 5 right good so that should be this and then we also close the bracket the expression has been validated right good the expression is valid so i will um 
rating this expression that will help us to calculate the water index we now look at the result layer the output layer we browse so let's call this the ndwi and then we click on save right good so we are going to leave other parameters as default jotif the output crs and the rest of that so we click on ok good so our ndwi is out we can decide to just um, work on this one so that um, good okay we can also work with a base map let's open quick good something like this to help us in validating so we have the water body somewhere around there so we have our ndwi that is now highlighting the water bodies right good so if we come back to our note I've only um, highlighted the water body. We now need, now need to start the extraction processes, right? Good. So we said we are going to use what um, thresholding method. So under the thresholding method, we still go back to the raster calculator and then use this expression to assign a value of one to the to the water bodies, right? Good. So let's come back to QGIS, back to raster. And then um, we have um, the raster calculator, right? Good. So one thing is that, okay, one thing is that we can clearly see that our water body is highlighted in white because um, looking at the color ramp here, we can see 0 0.2 down to minus 0 0.54, right? Good. And then if you also look at the base map towards this other side, which is bluish, you see the white clearly indicated right good so if we decide to put out our ndwi you can also see from the base map that there is actually water as indicated by what the algorithm right good so we now go back to the raster calculator to now assign the threshold value so we are using ndwi we have a bracket open so where it is um, greater than zero right we close that bracket and then we multiply it by one right good so the expression has been validated so we are now assigning what the threshold value of one to the water bodies right good so having done that we can also define the output layer so let's call this um, ndwi underscore threshold and then we click on ok good now you can see clearly that on the new threshold layer that's the raster layer that indicates only the water bodies to be one and all non-water bodies to be zero you can see that our water body has been clearly what um, highlighted right good so having confirmed this we can decide to automatically what extract these water bodies right good coming back to our note we are done with what using the raster calculator the thresholding method to start the extraction process right good now the final aspect will now be to extract because that's what we want to achieve on today's tutorial, right? Good. So we want to now extract the water bodies automatically. So to automatically extract the water bodies from the binary raster, where we now have zeros and ones, right? Good. Into a vector format, we can use the convert raster to polygon, right? Good. So I think that's um, polygonized, which we are going to see very soon. So let's come back to QGIS. We come down to raster under conversion we go to polygonize right good so what are we trying to polygonize we are trying to polygonize this our threshold and then band number is one because it's actually what's single then the name of the the name of the field to create the end right good you can change it to whatever name you would want then let's try to save this to file let's call this shp right good then the name of the file should be so we are having what extracted water bodies right so we click on save 
haven't set every other parameter we can decide to run good so we can just close this out and then we can see what the extracted water body so since it's a vector we can easily open up what the attribute table and then we can see our dn to be within zeros and ones right good so if we come back to our note we have different options to select the water polygons after conversion um, select only polygons that represent water bodies either manually or we use a query to select polygons where the pixel number or pixel value is one right good so i think this will be better so we still come back to still come back to qgis we open our expression builder and then we come down to the fields and values fields and values then where our dn is equal to one right good so it now select all the polygons that are representing the water body so we select the fissures so if we close this and then we minimize this okay coming back to our QGIS and then when we try to zoom in we can see that those polygons representing water bodies have been what have been they have been selected right good so since they have been selected we can decide to just export the selected fissures as a shape file then the file name so we now say this should be extracted water bodies too just to create a distinction then every other parameter will be left as it is and we click on ok so if we put this out and then we leave only the extracted water body and then let's zoom this to layer first of all good and if we leave only the extracted water body try to change the symbology to something like this and then maybe do whatever modification you want to do just for the purpose of this tutorial we'll stop at that you now see that um, on the imagery the water body have been selected right good so you know it's always best to validate the process right good so see that some of them might have been skipped you can decide to extend the vector you know by editing and um, start the toggle editing and perhaps extending it well basically we have shown you in details how to use um, QGIS and then Landsat 8 imagery to um, carry out this um, index or these indices on a um, normalized difference water right good so that's um, the normalized difference water index right good that helps you to measure the moisture content of vegetation or highlights water bodies in what in satellite image right good so these are some of the steps that um, we have used the formula the extraction process using thresholding down to using um, the raster calculator and then extracting the water bodies automatically and then we have our final product of this bluish polygons that represents what the water bodies so thanks for coming to class we hope we have shown you how to um, calculate NDWI using um, QGIS and Landsat 8 images we are going to see you on the next tutorial ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time bye